YouTube, what is up? Thanks for joining me today, this is Greg Scott. Today, we're going over something pretty cool. Yesterday, if you haven't seen the video yet, yesterday I went over Lightroom, and it was kind of like a little tutorial on my style, and you guys know that if you've watched any of my videos prior to this, you know that I like that moody, edgy look in my photos, and that's kind of what I go over, and you know, I, I came back home with a, a, a little bit underdeveloped photo, and I show you guys exactly how I brought some life back into that because it was a little bit too much underdeveloped for my liking. But today, today, we're gonna go over Photoshop. Photoshop is a little bit different than Lightroom. Lightroom is based on toggling your tones, your split toning, your saturation, vibrance, all these different things, and it's really just specific to those types of things. Photoshop, you have uh, some of that in Photoshop, but you have a lot of layering in Photoshop. Photoshop is used for like graphic design um, and you can also bring in photos and sort of put layers on top of photos and make different types of photos and make it your own style, which is really cool. And that's what we're going to do today. Periodically, and this is the reason why I want to go over Photoshop today, periodically I have people ask me, how do you get those like little orbs in your photos? What they're referring to is what's called bokeh. And bokeh is Oftentimes, if you get the composition correct, the, that, that bokeh, what's called bokeh, it actually occurs naturally if you get it right. And how that's basically achieved is if you have somebody in focus and in the background, so you see my hand right here, that right there back here, if this was a brighter light back here, like both of these lights back here, if they were a little bit brighter, you might be able to get a little bit of bokeh and those are those like little orbs that you see in photos. But sometimes you don't get as much as you really like or any at all and you want to add it into the photo to kind of spice up the photo and make it your own. So that's what we're going to do today. I want you guys to check it out. I'm going to do a little tutorial and show you exactly how you can achieve that. <laughs> really, it's, it's actually really easy. Photoshop is not as difficult as people make it. So let's hop into it. What is up everybody? We are back. This is the desired photo that we are going to use. Now this is a photo that I already have on Instagram. I didn't edit this photo any further. This is actually naturally occurring bokeh that's in the photo. Okay, and I didn't add anything to it because I thought that it was perfectly fine. I didn't want to, you know, go any further. But say for instance, you have this photo in one of your files and you're looking at it and you're like, man, I want to add a little bit more bokeh to this. I want to add my touch to it and make it a little bit more prominent. Okay, cool, perfectly fine. So let's find a bokeh image that is number one, large enough, number two, clear enough, and number three, the same, almost very similar colors that you already have in the photo. If you don't have any bokeh in the photo, just look around the surrounding light and try to match up with that light that you have in that photo, okay? So let's go ahead and make this layer visible. All right, so it's a little bit harsh in my opinion. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to cut this down a little bit. But as you can see, um, I made it to this size because there's a naturally occurring line, okay, in the background right here. And I want to keep it above that. And not only that, but the bokeh doesn't go any further down than this point right here. So that's where we're going to put it at, right? All right, cool. So you got the layer selected. In order to take out all this black filling right here, you're going to want to go down where it says normal right here and go down to where it says screen right under lighten, okay? Click screen and look at that. It takes out all of the black filling. Pretty cool, right? But you still got this harsh line that you want to blend in and you definitely have way too much bokeh. This just does not look natural. It looks like a volcano exploded and there's like a bunch of ash in the sky or something. I don't know. It doesn't look natural to me. So we are going to want to go over to the eraser tool. Click the eraser tool and you're going to want to click that layer. Make sure that layer is selected. Okay, click that layer one time. It's going to need to be rasterized. That way you can actually edit and take away this harsh line and blend it in a lot better and also take out a lot of this bokeh because you don't want all this bokeh. Like I said, it just doesn't look right in my opinion, really. All right, so let's do one quick swipe. Cool, that blended it in. Let's take a swipe up here, take a swipe up here. Sweet. Now let's start just kind of clicking around and until, uh, until you get the desired look. 
Some of this bokeh you're gonna wanna keep, some of it you're not, because there's definitely a lot more there than you really need for this photo. So, let's see here. I think we're pretty much, we're getting there. So it's pretty simple. Um, the, the other thing that you need to make sure of is, you know, this is personal preference. You can make your brush a little bit larger, but larger, but you want to make sure that the hardness on the brush is all the way down because if you have it all the way up, it's going to remove all the bokeh in one shot. In other words, it's going to be this giant, big, massive hole right there that is gone. So we don't want to do that. So let's undo that, and undo that, and undo that. All right, so let's bring it back down too soft and let's take that out right there all right cool so I think I think this is about where I want it I don't want any more and I don't want any less I think that this is looks it looks pretty natural to be quite honest with you so anyways guys I hope you got something out of this video if you did make sure you smack that like button and subscribe so that you can be updated for more videos when I do post them and be looking out for more of this stuff. Um, you know, I do like to do tutorials, but you know, obviously, as you guys know, the meat of this channel is that first person view photography, whether it's on the street or whether, you know, or in a controlled environment, really. But anyways, love you guys. We'll see you in the next video.